and the people still didn't repent. And it's so grievous to me, yeah. number one, that these judgments are coming. What's up, guys? My name is Elijah Weiss, and I'm here with Ben Weiss. We're here with Pastor Ben Weiss, the Pastor Ben Weiss. I'd like to think they saved the best for last, but probably they've just been hiding me. Well, awkwardly, you're not last. <laughs> so, I mean, that I can still be true. I guess. Okay. But, yeah. All right. But it's, it's definitely true here today. We have Pastor Ben, and he had a lot of wisdom. If you want to check out Pastor Ben's messages, you can go to gracecommunitychurch.com. There's messages every Sunday. If you want to check out his church, Thompson Road, Forward, Texas, go check it out every Sunday morning. And you guys have a Saturday service now, right? We do Saturday at 5 and Sunday at 10. Saturday at 5, Sunday at 10, check them out. It's going to be a great message, great community. You guys are going to love it. I guess the question I want to ask you is going into this new year, a lot of people, myself included, have, have the question of how do I get closer to God? And, and you know, we've all been through that time period in our lives where we're just like, man, I want to be close to God. I feel like I'm at this point where like, I, I want this relationship and we just don't know how. What is the best way to get closer to God? You know, there's lots of ways for different people. And I, I think one of the things that we really mess up in, in the Western gospel, the Western Christianity, uh, although there's not really a Western gospel, I think you know that. <laughs> I know However, you know. We, like to, we like to mold things into the way we want it. Yeah. And uh, which uh, sidebar conversation for another time is when I think uh, graven image, you know, you show up no graven images the, mm-hmm. in the second commandment. For us in America, in the Western Christianity, it's making God into the image that we want. 100%. It's not about um, having wood idols or our phones are idols or yeah. whatever. Our kids are idols. There's all kinds of idols, but I think for Americans and the Western Christianity, the worst thing we do is we create God into the image we want him to be in. Yeah. And then we think that's the gospel we need to preach. And that's just not the case. And we go to missionaries and... and we, right. We yeah. go around the world and we try to be the hope yeah. instead of bringing the hope. Like this is the only way to do this. <clears throat> right. But I, I say all that to say, I, I, think, I think you run into a challenge if you try to suggest there's one way to draw closer to the Lord. So I can tell you the way I draw closer to the Lord, and I can give you an example of how I draw closer to the Lord, but for others, it'll be different. Yeah. I'm not really a New Year's resolution guy. Um, you don't have any goals in life? I have no goals. None <laughs> at all. That's why you should come visit the church. I have none. Zero. If you, if you have no goals, then you can't be disappointed. That's, that's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, obviously I have goals. But I don't think... Number one, you need to wait till January 1st to set goals. Yeah. And if you're waiting till January 1st to set goals, then are you really going to fulfill them? Yeah. Because it's not that important to you. Because only that time of the year is when you set the goals. Not only that, it would suggest uh, that the that people start thinking about their uh, New Year's resolutions after Christmas. Yeah. So are you suggesting then that the Lord only speaks to you for one week a year? Mm-hmm. And that's the only time I'm focused on hearing what my goal should be for the next year. Yeah. Uh, so I set goals all through the year of what the Lord's asking me to do. You know, there's a lot of people who are gonna do weight loss goals. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are gonna change diet. And Paul says in, in 1 Timothy 4, you know, it's, it's good to discipline your body, but it's better to discipline your spirit, man. Yeah. And uh, I, I try to start the year off with a new journal reading plan. Uh, scripture says the word of God doesn't return void. It says that all of the world is fading. It's like flowers fading and they'll burn up, they'll be gone. But the word of God never fails. It never changes and it ne- it'll never go away. And so uh, a fresh commitment to go through the Bible in a year. Um, and by the way, if any pastors watching out there, uh, you need to not be um, only reading for sermon prep. Mm. Uh, my journal reading plan is for my personal devotion. Yeah. Every once in a while, the Lord will speak to me specifically for that week's message. But the goal is not to get an And it will be something added to the message. Yeah. The message is not necessarily coming from that. Uh, you need to be personally in the Word. You yeah. need to have your own devotion time. And so that's what that is. The, yeah. the journal reading that we start in January, and it'll be... Three chapters a day, four chapters a day, uh, and then 
you get two days behind and then you quit. Yeah. And don't, don't quit. Uh, if you're doing the plan, just start off where you're at. If you miss two days or you miss three days and nine chapters is insurmountable to you, I understand it. So just start on the day that you're supposed to be on. That's the other great part about like the digital plan. Yeah. Um, even if you're using a paper Bible, which I think is always great, yeah. the U version will have, you're on day seven, and so this is what you're supposed to read on day seven. Just read day seven. You don't have to make up day three and day six that you missed. Just read day seven. I feel like when it comes to New Year's, you know, people trying, for instance, someone's trying to get closer to God. I know the people that don't understand the Word of God. What advice would you give to someone that's trying to learn the Bible, trying to learn how to read the Bible? Because I feel like for a lot of people that I know, like, you know, people have, have talked to me and they're like, man, I really want to read the Bible. It's just, I don't get it or I'm confused. Or like, so I guess my question is, how do you suggest studying the Bible or falling in love with the Word of God? I, I think I've told you, and if I haven't, I should have told you. Love is not a feeling, it's a choice. Yeah. Uh, as a pastor, when you tell me you fall out, you've fallen out of love, I will push back and I will tell you that's a choice. You have chose, you, you choose to fall out of love. You choose to not love a person anymore. And I think you choose to love scripture. Mm -hmm. um, being in marriage, uh, 27 years, uh, I love my wife. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me other than Jesus. But there's no question there have been times that we've had challenges and it's difficult. There's no question there's times I've made her mad and she has to choose to love me. <laughs> Um, it's easy to love her, but she has to choose to love me at times. I think it's the same thing with anything in life. You choose to love your job. You choose yeah. to love the scripture. You choose to love going to church. You choose to love anybody or anything. It's it's always a choice. It's not a feeling. Yeah. And James tells us that if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And so for, for those who, who really ask, genuinely ask me the question you're asking, uh, I don't understand. I don't know what to do. It doesn't make sense to me. I'll always tell them we'll start in the New Testament. Uh, right. Start in John. Uh, because if you get nothing, you'll at least get Jesus. Yeah. And then the other thing I tell them is pray before you read. Lord, make this real to me. Make me Help me to understand this. And I believe the Lord answers that prayer. Yeah. And so when you pray before you read, Lord, help me just to understand something. And it's... You don't have to understand the complexity of all of it. You don't have to understand the deep, you know, second and third things that, that might be applications for your life. Maybe it's just one verse where it says Jesus wept and all of a sudden you're like, Jesus had feelings? Yeah. Jesus cared about something enough to cry? And and it's just a, an observation that means something to you. That's hearing from the Lord. Yeah. The other part that I would tell people is, this is the Lord talking to you. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. And it's a reference to Jesus. And so the the Scripture, what we call Scripture, uh, old and new, Genesis to Revelation, it's Jesus talking to you. And so for those who say, I don't hear from the Lord, the very first question I ask them is, do you read Scripture? And if you read Scripture, you're hearing from the Lord. Yeah. And, and you may not understand what you're hearing or... It, it may not be um, relevant in that moment of your life, but all scripture is relevant. All yeah. scripture is for today. And pray. You pray, Lord, help me help me to understand this. Believe that as I'm drawing near to the Lord by reading scripture, he's drawing near to me. Yeah. And then look for that observation. Whatever that thing that, that jumps out at you for whatever reason. I was reading Revelation today because I'm to the end of this year. Yeah, there's some scary <laughs> stuff in there. Uh, and... I think it's chapter 10, if I remember correctly. And it's talking about these judgments that are coming. And they're pretty horrific things. Yeah. And and the people still didn't repent. Like all of these judgments happen. And, and it says, and the people still didn't repent. And it's so grievous to me, yeah. number one, that these judgments are coming. Man, I don't want to be here. But yeah. if I am here, I can't imagine being somebody who would walk through all of those judgments and all of those things and still not have a heart change. If you are surrendering to the Lord, you're saying, I want to draw closer to you, Lord. I, I want to know you more. We're flipping the calendar. Man, 2023 stunk. I've ordered the uh, blessed and highly favored 2024. 
and it starts with Lord I want to draw near to you yeah and God has no desire to not draw near to us it's not a game it's not a carrot on a stick and yeah. he's, he wants to be in deep relationship with us so we are the ones that make it more difficult it's not him it's just a surrender yeah I think for me the coolest thing as a Christian to understand is that the word of God is living active sharper than any two of the sword like splitting between bow and bow and marrow it is active like when I hear those words you know I'm in Bible college I hear them read and it's like yeah that's cool but like when you really start to understand and stuff to get into scripture it's like how is this text that was written thousands of years ago it could be more applicable to my life today and to me that, that just it proves so much that there's no way that whoever was writing that knew I was going to be born I was going to be here right now and I think also what you said about prayer is it's a very important part that I think people neglect people forget that because of Jesus's Jesus Christ's death and resurrection we can talk to God like right. prayer is not just petition no it's not but most of the Western gospel, yeah. the Western Christianity, is uh, they can only pray for two minutes and it is because it's all of the things that we need, yeah. and then we stop praying. Yeah. And prayer is is praying scripture. Exactly. Uh, prayer is worship. Prayer is uh, praying for my my nephew who's getting married in a few weeks, and it's not anything to do with me. It's to it's, it's for you. It's intercession. It's for you. Uh, Prayer is all kinds of things, and yet we limit it to, I really need to pay this bill, yep. and I really need this person healed, and I really need all of these things, and it's as simple as I just want to have a conversation with God. Exactly. Which is so incredible that we can talk yeah. to God. Scripture says there's no longer a mediator between us and Him. You, you quoted in Hebrews, uh, living in... Active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, it goes on to say that we can come boldly into the throne room of yeah. of our King, of our Lord, because He's a high priest that understands yeah. the things that you and I have dealt with. What other God, what other Savior, what other thing that we worship understands because they have gone through it? Yeah, and yet He has compassion for us as a result. You don't need January 1st to start. You mm -hmm. just need to say, man, today's December 29th. I need to draw closer to the Lord today. And to me, that's the most important thing. It's not about waiting and it's not about, well, I missed it, so now I gotta wait a whole other year. It's it's the <laughs> it's the pig on Toy Story with the channel JJ <laughs> Toy Story yeah. yeah. You're yeah. going past <laughs> it, you gotta go all the way through. Yeah. Like you don't have to do that. Just start over. Just yeah. I wanna be near you, Lord. Yeah. No, I, I 100% couldn't agree more. And for those of you watching at home and anyone that, that has the question of how do I draw closer to God or going into this new year, what can I do better to get closer to God? I think he answered it perfectly. It's a daily decision that we have to make and it's a choice that we have to make that we have to be intentional to pray and read our word and truly fall in love with scripture. And as we fall in love with scripture, we begin to understand and see the heart of God and see how he loves us and how he wants us to be closer to him and how when we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. So for any of you at home that are wondering how to, how to get closer to God, I want to encourage you to apply these things to your life. Go home, turn off the video right now and just get in scripture. Just go wherever you need to go. John is a great place to start and just truly start to understand and try to read scripture and, and just like, my uncle, Pastor Ben said, pray, ask God to help you understand the scripture, ask God to speak to you, to, to just guide you as you read the words on the page and understand they're not just words on the page. The scripture is living and active. And I truly just want to challenge you to believe that for yourself and just try to get something from it. So thank you for coming on today. I know the people on uh, the watching the video can, can get something from us. I know I did. Um, so until next time, shalom and God bless.